Daryl, one of the things that's been talked about in this series is your size versus their speed, obviously. What do you guys have to do with your size to negate their speed? I think their size, if you actually look at it, their lineup that they had last game and our lineup that we had last game is, is identical. So the size is the same, so I guess we got a problem with their speed. How do you deal with that? Pardon? How do you deal with that? User size. <laughs> I mean, it's not that, I mean, everybody's fast, everybody's big. I mean, it's just a, something that somebody pulled and said that's a factor. It's, I don't think it's, I think both teams got to this point because they have some size and they have some speed. Sort of following up on that, Daryl, uh, there's been a lot of praise kind of for the Detroit-Chicago series, the style of it, the, the attractiveness of the game, and probably you guys are getting the other side of it, whereas uh, the feeling that, that you're not playing somehow attractive enough hockey, or uh, I'm just wondering if, if you have any thoughts on the, the <laughs> whole philosophical debate or whether you care at all. Well, I don't really care what you think if that has anything to do with it and that seems to be the line why is, is that what they're saying to Boston too oh. I really don't know what that means <coughs> both both teams I mean I don't I really don't understand the question quite honest. I mean we were fourth or fifth in offense during the year and we were fourth or fifth in defense and I generally allows you to make the playoffs and then generally allows you to give you a chance to get to the series, so. Uh. I, I can answer that a little from our perspective. I mean, it's a bigger <laughs> issue. The St. Louis series, we, I, and I don't know if that fits with your question, but by far generated as much, if not more buzz in Los Angeles than the Stanley Cup final. You had guys on ESPN radio and stuff who'd never been to a hockey game and went to those games. And the way, way they were talking about those players, the way they played so hard. Uh, I've never, it was by my seven years in LA, I never heard so many maybe out people outside the circle start talking about the, the excitement and how hard that series was. And so, I don't really understand the question either from having lived it in LA for the seven years because from hockey people to people outside were talking about how impressed they were that those players on uh, how hard this game is. And that's not taking anything like San Jose was just as hard, don't get me wrong, but in terms of attractive hockey, I've never seen so many people turned on by the game itself. Can you uh, give us any kind of a, an update on Jared Stoll? No. Um, Dean, over. Um, a few years ago, you talked about the progression of a of a team and an organization from thinking, hoping you can win, thinking you can win, expecting to win. Is, have you not gotten to the point where you expect to win again? Uh, well, I think. Um, There is a progression there, and I think um, that, and I, and I know Daryl talked about this with players even before the series, that it's, there's another level that an athlete should want to reach af even after they've won one. And, you know, to be part of a franchise um, in the mode of those, whether it's the Red Wings or the Packers or the Patriots, that there's another level that they should strive for. You're far from being the best you can be as an individual and as a team. And I think we're progressing towards that. And I think just like this year too, um, you know, I cited critical moments last year and uh, you know, there were several of them this year where they were severely tested and they keep finding a way to fight through and as they've done at times during the playoffs. So I still think it's a process and um, but I keep seeing strides every day. You know, some of our young players, you talk about improved players, 
tend to forget about guys like Dowdy and stuff and because they're such really good players, how much better players him and Voinov are, for instance, after this year, and they're only going to continue to get better. Can I have a follow-up? Um, where you talked about um, some times this year where they were tested or some critical points this season. What do you see as some of the critical points? I, I thought the way we responded after um, is very similar. I thought in both games, well, I think there's a number of them, but from afar, again, he lives it at the micro level every day, so he knows better than I do. But sitting up there, I thought the game in Detroit, like we were struggling. Um, we go into Detroit, and I arguably completely outplayed them, tied it up uh, in the last minute, and they scored with 10 seconds left. I think a lesser team, and given where we were trying to get our foot on the ground, feet on the ground, the way they responded after that said a lot. Again, there's a critical moment to, to rise, and if you, you know, unless you have character and competitiveness and leadership in that room, I think a lesser team says, heck with it, we'll do it again next year. So that's what sites jumps out to me. There's others, but he can speak to it better than I can. I'm not, sh you know, I agree with Dean, that was a critical set of games for us, but we didn't get here by accident. We won the Stanley Cup last year. So in terms of critical points during the season, I mean, we had to go overcome a lot of adversity just because of the, because of when you, when you win it, the, not just playing the games, but everything that comes along with, with that. And our players did an outstanding job of that. I told them several times all season, right from day one about, you have to remember when you, you when the lockout, was on, and then we had seven or what was it, seven days of training camp. We come back. Basically, our training camp was involved players coming back, and you had to fit training camp. You had to fit on ice into off ice. What was still part of the celebration part of it in terms of interview functions, all that sort of thing. Our players did an awesome job handling all that. So there's the adversity right there, and then the, and then naturally when you uh, we lost opening night to the Blackhawks, and then we went on the road for two and. And then so naturally there's the people that are following you that are critiquing every shift that they play. So yeah, the players handled all that very well. And if you look at it, they, our goals coming into the season were, you can't say we're going to, our goal is to win the Stanley Cup. Everybody's goal is to win the Stanley Cup. You have to do it in, in steps. And our step was to improve, first step was to improve on things that we wanted to get better at from last year, and that's what we focused on, and, and that's what we did. And at the end, everything that we talked about, we accomplished, which it says a lot about the group. I think that's the other thing you, can, you forget too, and, and coaches and players did a great job. We lost two defensemen that were critical to that stand. We didn't have them all year, and those two guys were arguably two of the best penalty killers in the league in Green and Mitchell. Clearly, you know, we're leaders on the back. You know, we're paired with the puck movers. We didn't have that all year. And that they were a big part of that, our team and our identity. You know, they're not the rock stars, but everybody knows how important they are in that room. And we didn't have them all year. And uh, people forget that. That's pretty significant. On the plus side, that gave Dowdy and Voinoff more responsibility, and a kid like Muzzin comes in, and coaches did a great job breaking that kid in under tough circumstances, but you forget the responsibility that then got put on Dowdy and Voinoff. And, um, you know, arguably, this is the first time all year, you know, Willie, we knew, wasn't coming back at all, but, you know, uh, we're even close to being healthy, so. But we had to, d we deserved that. We were fortunate last year to go through the playoffs out and Jim and Daryl talked about it. That's the type of adversity you've got to overcome and it's coming. Your turn's coming. And we took it in a big way with those two guys. So, um, it's just. Dean, you've mentioned the growth of Dowdy and Voinov. Um, how has winning the Stanley Cup last year affected the development of Dowdy, and where has his growth taken place, whether on and off the ice? How, how has it happened this year? Well, like Daryl lives it every day. I know I see it. Um, well, I don't know. Why don't you speak to that? I think you're the one to put the responsibility. He's a big game player. So if you look at how many games you p we played last year, 20 playoff games, he's a big game player. He got better as it went along. He was a 
you have to remember he's all he's been part of championships before and been a significant part of it even as a younger guy on it so he did that again last year and at, at the end at the end when you just evaluate as as you will as a staff again at the end of the playoffs you evaluate what the that's the experience not the regular season experience it's a whole different experience there's not many guys his age that have already accomplished what he has accomplished so that in itself is the experience of doing it uh, this one's for Dean or for Darrell. Last year, you guys are 16 and four in the run of the cup, and I think a lot of us say, "Hey, the the Kings breeze to the cup." That number had a re now. And this year, you've got a, a tough series against St. Louis, a tough series against the the Sharks. How deceptive was that number last year at 16 and four? How much harder was it than those than those uh, figures led on? Well, I think what's significant is we were the eighth seed, and we had to play the one seed. And that's the tough, toughest part. You're playing the best team in the league right off the top. It's simple. So that's the most significant part. And then the next part is rounds three and four. We did. We had trouble scoring. And it's like you're alluding back to Cam's question at the start. If we'd scored three or four more goals in these playoffs, you wouldn't be asking that question. It's clear. I mean, if you look, look at the difference, we've to this point. Uh, I don't think we lost an overtime game last year in the playoffs. And this year we've. What are we one and th one and three in overtimes? So there's the there's the difference. Daryl, uh, obviously, you have to win a road game to win this series. You know, last year you won on the road often. This this year, uh, not as often. What has been the difference? Just if you're listening, you just with it. We've lost through what three overtime games on the road, and we've scored in our last. We have to be a great defensive team as you, as the team we are playing is. But to score that big goal is, is the difference. Darrell, I know that the Blackhawks and the city of Chicago have always been special to you because you played here and coached here. To come here in this situation with so much at stake with two teams that are at this level, are you able to enjoy this or, or, or maybe take this all in, or are you just focused on? Yeah, I, I always enjoy coming back here because obviously the the hockey environment of the building that they took it from the and I was part of that the 48 game last 48 game we went from Chicago Stadium to the United Center and we got beaten in the conference finals by Detroit so that's that's what I take out of it it's, it's an awesome city and it, to play in it doesn't matter if you're home or away that's the biggest part Dan Dean, is the size on the on this team by design? Is it a philosophy of yours to build a big team, or did it kind of the way it it just almost developed that way? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, I think you know. I think Daryl and I agree. Um, um, what wins in this league, you know, we've been together a long time and it's basically a very similar model that we used in San Jose and and part of it is size, but then again, if that size doesn't compete and have the will to win, it's not going to matter. So it certainly is an asset just like speed and I think as we see in the playoffs how hard and physical it is um, and there's never going to be much space, it does have an advantage. But whether you're scouting or building a team to just grab size can be a very dangerous philosophy if you don't look at the other elements. But I'd say for the most part, it's a similar model that we used in San Jose. Do you know that's really even better? Because very simple, when we were struggling in February or March, not this season, the previous season, we wanted some more skill in our lineup. And this skill was Dwight King and Jordan Nolan. So you're going saying size, we're saying skill. So, <laughs> and if you look at our playoffs this year, whatever that means, we haven't played our biggest guys all the time. In fact, in fact, some of them guys aren't even playing. We've used 23, four, 24 guys plus Jonathan Bernier, which is 25 guys. So if you just do it based on that to date, we certainly didn't have our 
oh, let's just dress our big guys. <laughs> we dressed what was best that night. If it was just about that, then there'd be 25 guys in work boots instead of Daryl, at the uh, Blackhawks press conference, you know, Jonathan Quick uh, obviously, deservedly, was a, a big point of, uh, of the questioning. Not much about Corey Crawford here. Um, again, you know, maybe deservedly. But I was just curious, uh, your thoughts about, uh, about Corey Crawford, and is he a, a goalie that, that teams feel they have to kind of beat, or is it just the Blackhawks defense? Or, you know, how do you we feel about Corey Crawford? We will have to beat Corey Crawford in order to win a game, because you can't win nothing, nothing. So we're going to have to beat Corey Crawford. You can win nothing. You can get points, nothing, nothing in the regular season. You can't get wins in playoffs. Was so there anything about his game or what he's playing now that is a He's had a hell of a year. He's had a hell of a year. I think they they won the, uh, didn't they win the Jennings? So I would say that you better give Corey Crawford some lots of credit. <laughs> 